So while they are passing and receiving into the boxes, they are also going to try and stop the other teams from scoring as quickly. So it may be, as this blue player is moving towards that box, they interrupt the pass here in order to intercept, which will then slow this team down as they carry on and score points for themselves. Hello, my name is Ryan Davies. I am a physical education officer, part of the coach development team here at England Football Learning. This session is called Pass and Move, and we are working on the technical skills of passing and receiving with the players, with a focus on positioning, timing, movement, as well as developing holistic skills, such as their social interactions and communication with teammates. To set the session up, you will need to create five boxes that are going to be integral in terms of the point scoring of the game. In this version, I'm going to use one half of the pitch and put my five scoring zones in these areas here. In this practice, it doesn't matter how many players you have as they will be working in pairs in teams of two. If you have an odd number of players, teams of three is absolutely fine. So in this example, I've got my nine and 10 who are gonna be working together as a pair. Two midfield players, the four and the eight. These two players are gonna be working together and my two goalkeepers. So they will all be working independently in their pairs to play the game. The object of the game is to try and get the ball into a box where it is received by your partner. That will score a point. Once the player has received the ball, they will then move the ball and look to find their partner in another area of the pitch. Again, they score by going to a different area and receiving the ball in that space. To start the game, I'm going to look at what it might look like in the foundation phase. So this may be an introduction level to those who haven't got a lot of football experience. In order to work on some of the aspects such as their movement and their timing and their communication skills, we may start with the ball in hand. So each pair, one of the players will start with their ball in hand and we can frame it as acting as goalkeepers. Concept of the game remains the same in terms of moving the ball into the boxes to score points, but rather than receiving with their feet, they will catch the ball before moving into space to find their partner. They will continue to do this for a set period of time. So I usually do it in little chunks of about two minutes. And in that two minutes, they will see how many points they can score. As we are taking the technical aspect of the passing and receiving out, it gives us a real opportunity to focus on some of those finer skills, such as where are they moving? How are they moving? How are they communicating with their partner? and the timing of their run. Obviously, there will be some natural disruption within the game because as it is taking place, the other teams will have the same objective going from box to box. So the teams may cross over with each other, which is absolutely fine, which provides us with a little bit of disruption as we take a step towards uh, the game situation. When it's appropriate, I will move the practice on and start to get the ball on the floor. Obviously, this can be a choice for the players, depending on their experience and when they feel comfortable to put the ball on the floor. Once they've got the ball on the floor, this is when we can start to focus on some of the technical detail of the pass and the receiving skills, potentially turning within the box to then find space going forward. As you can see, I have set up the boxes in one half of the pitch, but you can vary that depending on the amount of players that you have and the range of passing that you want to focus on. You may want to focus on shorter range passing, in which case you can bring the space in, or longer range passing, in which case increase the area accordingly. Again, during this version of the game, there will be the natural disruption of the other teams who will be doing the same thing. So the players will have to avoid the other teams as they are moving around the square in order to score the points. They can, of course, once the ball's on the floor, utilize some of their dribbling skills as well. However, the point scoring will be with a pass into the box and safely receiving it without the ball running out. The next stage of the game is we can start to take a step forward towards what it might look like in a match situation. So now, what I'm going to encourage the players to do is to cause a little bit of disruption to the other teams. So while they are passing and receiving 
into the boxes, they are also going to try and stop the other teams from scoring as quickly. So it may be, as this blue player is moving towards that box, they interrupt the pass here in order to intercept, which will then slow this team down as they carry on and score points for themselves. During this section of the game, obviously the players will now have to consider other things as well as just the timing and the movement of their partner. They'll also have to think about when and where to pass, making sure that they're getting in space away from other players who may be trying to get in the way and intercept the ball. That timing of movement, spatial awareness and those scanning skills to make sure they are aware of where the spaces that they want to move into are going to be critical and a good observational focus point for the coach who is delivering the session. As the players become more confident, we can then take another step towards a match situation. What we may do now is take a ball from one of the groups and they become the defenders. So in this case, the blue team are now active defenders. Their purpose as the other groups, as the other pairs are passing the ball, is to try and score points themselves as defenders. They can do this in two ways. One would be if they manage to get a touch on the ball in between the pass going to their partner, that'd be worth one point. Or they can actually score three points if they manage to intercept the ball and steal it and dribble it into a corner themselves. They will then leave the ball and then go and look to try and steal another one. So we're giving a real incentive to the defenders to try and cause some disruption and cause some chaos for the teams who are passing. This in turn will obviously increase the challenge for the players who are passing and receiving and give them more to think about in terms of where the opposition are who are trying to stop them from scoring points. Depending on the group we are working with, we could also increase the challenge further. We may take a ball from another team and increase the numbers of defenders. The final progression that we are going to make in this practice is to play some matched up games. So in this case, we're gonna have two 2v2 games going on on the same pitch. In this instance, we've got the blues against the yellows with one ball here, and the goalkeepers against non-numbers with this ball here. Both games will be going on in the same area and the teams can score in any of the boxes as they have been doing previously within the practice. However, in this game, the challenge has been increased because now the opposition are trying to steal the ball and then score themselves. So we're essentially creating attack v defense. Once they have the ball, they are trying to score points by getting it to the boxes, the opposition of the defenders until they steal it when they become the attackers to try and score themselves. Obviously, depending on the number of players, you may have three, four, five different versions of this game going on on the same pitch. Depending on the level of experience of the group, you may have some working ball in hand as goalkeepers, while others uh, have the ball on the floor and are more comfortable passing and receiving with their feet. These matched up versions of the game allow us to really focus on those timing, movement, technical skills of the passing and receiving, while also the deception of trying to outwit an opponent, as in this case, there was always somebody who will be putting pressure on either the person passing the ball or the person receiving the ball. As a coach, we can step back and observe a game at a time to see how we can best support the players in terms of their receiving skills based around the six capabilities.